Last night, I did a three and a half hour marathon live stream on the new 04. We took them out of the boxes. We tore them down. We had a look at them on the Spectrum Analyzer and we learned a lot. However, I wanted to put something together which was just a bit of a quick, concise questions answered video where I'm going to answer the top 10 things that I've seen people answered around 04. So hopefully this will give you all of the basic things that you need to know. Before we do that though, I also want to say there's a lot more videos coming on 04 and if you want to see that live stream, please do check out the link to it in the description. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's start with question number one. So the first question is goggles and what ones are compatible with DJI 04. Now, the goggles that work today are as follows. It is the DJI Goggles 3, it is the DJI Goggles N3, it is the DJI Goggles 2, and it is the DJI Goggles Integra. DJI Goggles version 1 and DJI Goggles version 2 are not compatible with DJI 04. The DJI Goggles version 1 and version 2 will likely never be compatible with DJI 04 and it is only Goggles 3, Goggles N3, 2 and Integra. You will need to update the firmware on these goggles to be able to use them with the 04 ear units and don't worry there is no downsides to updating the firmware. You will not lose compatibility on the goggles 2 or Integra with the likes of the original ear unit or 03. You simply gain the ability to use DJI 04. Now that leads me nicely on to question number two and that is what DJI remote controllers work with 04. Now this is actually dependent on the goggles. So for instance, if you use DJI 04 with the goggles 3 or the goggles N3, the DJI FPV remote 3 is the one you need. However, if you use the DJI 04 system with the Goggles 2 or Goggles Integra, you have to use the DJI FPV Remote Version 2. What you cannot do is use the FPV Remote Version 3 with the Goggles 2 or Integra or the FPV Remote Version 2 with the Goggles 3 or Goggles N3. The remote matches the goggle, so FPV Remote 3 with Goggles 3 N3, FPV Remote 2 with Goggles 2 and Integra. Obviously, you don't have to use the DJI Remote. You can use your own remote system as well, but if you did want to use the DJI Remotes, those are the ones that you need. The next question is what frames does DJI 04 fit? Now that is a bit of a complicated one at this moment in time because 04 has a new camera mounting system. Now the spacing on this mount is fairly well known. It is a 16mm spacing from top to bottom and it really doesn't conform to anything that we have seen in the past. I do think there are some reasons why DJI have done this. It's very difficult for them to move this to anywhere else. Whilst there is some space inside the camera here in the middle, actually the lens of probably get in the way and DJI is in a bit of a difficult position simply because of the sheer size of the lens and not wanting to make the camera any wider. It is a little bit annoying because it doesn't fit most traditional frames but what I can say is right now Chris Rosser has released options for his AOS series. He's released 3D prints available. I know iFlight have released new front ends for some of their frames as well. Most manufacturers will be releasing new frames as time goes on. But if you did need to convert a frame today, the safest and quickest is going to be the AOS 5 version 5 as an example. However, you will see more frames from other manufacturers in the near future. Now, before we talk about the ear units, the next question is spectator mode. Now 04 does support spectator mode but there is some compatibility differences between the goggles. So depending on your primary goggle will depend on what you can spectate to. It is the same as the remote controllers in the sense of if your primary goggle is either goggles 3 or N3 you can only spectate to another goggles 3 or N3. If your primary goggle is goggles 2 or Integra, you can only spectate to another goggles 2 or Integra. Unfortunately, what you cannot do is spectate from goggles 3 as the master to the goggles 2 as the spectator, N3 as the master to goggles 2 as the spectator, or any cross between those systems. So basically, you can only spectate to the O4 goggles or the O3 goggles if your primary goggle is one of those systems. 
Now, one of the biggest questions that I've seen around is about cameras and compatibility. Now, the O4 system has two different cameras. We have a pro camera and we have a standard camera. Now, I can confirm that the cables used on these have the same connections. You can physically swap the cable from the pro onto the cable from the light. However, it is worth noting that the cameras at this moment in time are not compatible. Whilst you can physically attach the pro camera onto the standard ear unit, it does not work. It just shows a black screen with no megabytes a second. And whilst you can swap the standard camera onto the pro ear unit, unfortunately, it behaves exactly the same. It is not compatible. And whilst you can physically swap them over, they don't actually work. Now, with regards to the DJI 03 camera. I've seen a lot of questions around that. First of all, the cable on 03 is not the same cable as on 04. So unfortunately you cannot use 03 camera cables on 04. And the 03 camera as a result of that is not compatible with the 04 ear units. The 04 cameras are not compatible with the 03 ear unit. They are entirely separate. Right now, at the point of me recording, there are no longer camera cables available. The only way you could get a longer camera on 04 at the moment is if you wanted to put the pro cable onto the standard ear unit. But if you did need a longer cable for your pro ear unit, unfortunately, there isn't anything available today, but I am sure manufacturers will release them in the future. Now, one other thing just to mention on the camera cables is Avatar because O4 actually uses the same camera connection as the Avatar HD system. I have tested it and unfortunately, whilst the cable is the same connector, it doesn't work. It produces an error on the camera. So whilst you could physically attach the Avatar cable, it doesn't work. And unfortunately, that means we're going to need to wait for people to release new cables before we can have longer ones. Now, the next question that I've seen is around the minimum voltage on the standard or what I call the light ear unit. Now, I have done my own testing on this and in my tests, when armed, the minimum voltage before this ear unit starts to play up is between 3.55 and 3.65 volts. Now, it does depend what state you have the ear unit in. So, for instance, if you have it disarmed, you might be able to go a bit lower. But if you have it armed in about 25 milliwatts, I have found that it starts to flick on and off at around 3 0.6 volts. I did get a little bit lower, but it wasn't reliable. Unfortunately, what that means is this really isn't a true 1S VTX. And if you do want to use it on 1S voltages, you really are going to need a voltage stabilized back. Next is low power mode. And this is one that annoyed a lot of people with O3. For those who don't know, on the original FPV system, you had the ability to turn off low power mode and that would give you full RF power. Unfortunately, on 03, whilst you could turn off low power mode, it didn't actually give you full RF power and it still needed an arming command to kick it into the maximum output. I am pleased to be able to confirm that with 04, that is no longer the case. You no longer need an arming command to kick it into full low power. Turning off low power mode now gives you full RF. And what's even nicer is that DJI have now also introduced full manual power settings again on 04. You have power selection from 25 to 700 milliwatts on the standard ear unit or 25 all the way up to 1200 milliwatts on the Pro. And this is giving you full control. So you no longer need to have a flight controller or use something to kick it into full output. Next, we have race mode. Now, this is something new that DJI have introduced on 04. This allows a new lower latency mode as low as 15 milliseconds on the Pro ear unit when used with the Goggles 3 or 20 milliseconds on the standard stroke light. Now, something to note about race mode is unfortunately, this is only available on the new 04 based goggles. That is the Goggles 3 and the Goggles N3. Unfortunately, the Goggles 2 
all the goggles Integra are not compatible with race mode. So if you do want this new feature, you are going to want one of these new sets of goggles. It is unlikely this feature will ever come to those older goggles in the future due to the changes in the RF chipset. Now, I'm going to be talking about this a lot more in a future video, but I can confirm race mode changes the system into a manual channel mode that aligns to the race band channels. It forces you into 1080p 100 frames a second to give you the lowest latency and it pushes you into 20 megahertz bandwidth. What's more important about this is the RF behavior and I can confirm that when in race mode it now aligns the goggles telemetry link onto the same frequency as the ear unit and what that means is that it should no longer interfere with other users. DJI have gone back to the way it used to work with the old system in race mode. For instance here we have the video carrier located here with the goggles telemetry link transmitting all over the band hopping around as we've seen before. However when you now enter race mode you will see that everything cleans up. If I move it up to the channel so you can see it. There you can now see the carrier has appeared for the video and the goggles carrier has now remained static over the top of it. It's a much smaller carrier than we've seen before and this means that it should offer less interference on the band compared to when operating in normal mode. I can also confirm that when your ear unit is turned off, your goggles do not transmit, which means in a race environment, you would be able to walk around with your goggles turned on because they would not affect other users. But I do want to give a bit of a warning that when you power on the ear unit, there is a little bit of a sweep across the band. I will cover that in a bit more detail. So what my advice to you is in race mode, it is absolutely absolutely better than what we had before. It should not cause problems with other pilots, but don't power on whilst other pilots are in the air. And finally, the big one, question number 10, is FCC hacks. Now, I'm pleased to be able to say that the FCC hacks work exactly the same on 04 as they do on 03. You simply place the ham file onto your SD card and place this into your goggles and power the system on. Then you should see the new options available. So, for instance, you should have manual channel selection. You should have up to three channels available in 60 and 40 megahertz mode and up to seven channels available in 20 and 10 megahertz mode. I've confirmed it on the bench, the Spectrum Analyzer. You not only get full RF power, but you get the full manual channel selection as well. There is some interesting behavior actually on 04 compared to 03 with its dynamic power. It's a lot more dynamic than it was on 03. And you've got the new race mode feature as well, which we will talk about in the future. But it's great to see that not only is the ham file working, you've now got full manual channel selection and manual power selection available as well. Now, as I said at the start of the video, I did a long live stream on this three and a half hour marathon where we looked at the 04 e units, we tore them down, we had a look at it on the Spectrum Analyzer as well. If you're interested in seeing that, please do check out the link to it in the description. I've also got a number of new videos coming on this in the next couple of weeks. We're going to have a dedicated video on race mode because there's a lot to understand around this. There's going to be a video on the teardown, which is a bit more detailed and we're going to be looking at the images and stuff and going into the technical differences between 03 and 04. There's going to be a video talking about how to make a naked 04 Pro ear unit and what you need to be careful of and we're going to be doing a deep dive into the thermals in that video as well. So if you're interested in seeing any of that, please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Please also consider giving this video a like as well. Finally, if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content like this, please do consider checking out the links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. It is only through the support of my patrons I'm able to keep making content on this channel. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content in the future, please do check it out. I want to say a huge thank you to all of the donations, the Patreons, and everyone who supports the channel. We would not be able to do this without your support. Anyway, that's it for this one. Hopefully that's answered the main questions. If there's something I've missed, Put it down below, I will answer it, and I will put it in a pinned comment in the top of this video. That's it from me. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.